Good morning and welcome in to Bet Sports Golf here for the 2024 Masters First Look Show. Cannot wait. We, you know, we have to touch on the Valero Ron. We're forced to talk about the Cognizant Classic. We're forced to talk about uh, the Amex. We're here. This is what we wanted. This is what we're waiting for. Uh, how are we doing? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, the week is here, like you said. And, uh, you know, the, the Valero was kind of sneaky good down the stretch. You know, I I had no clue that um, Denny even came back. I just assumed. I turned it off. I had you know, I was driving, and it's like I, he was up at like six with like eight, nine holes to go. And, you know, he can get so hot with that putter. And, you know, he is so much better on approach. And so, you know, I, I probably shouldn't have been shocked, but you just don't expect to see something like that happen. Uh, but, you know, credit to Akshay, like the stones to pull through and, you know, fight through the injury and everything, and win that first playoff hole. So that was that was actually really good TV. Going back and watching that yesterday, yeah, it, it really it was like I was watching it because I had the Akshay ticket and want to see it through because you know how golf goes. Like it just a six stroke lead feels enormous, but theoretically, like you just the way he was going and putting, like Akshay wasn't even playing poorly. It just was a matter of like Denny didn't miss um, even early. Like Akshay didn't. He wasn't conservative. He was really kind of going for it and playing his game, which I really like to see too. And just it's easy for the nerves to kick in. You're 22, kind of the first time you've been in that type of field in a situation on a Sunday to win. And uh, obviously, that's a great story for him to punch his ticket and go back after being, you know, a drive, chip, and putt contestant uh, back in 2014. Just really, really cool for him to kind of get back there. It feels like a great fit for the course, to be honest. I mean, like, I'm not talking about like betting on Akshay to win this golf tournament, but like just down the road. I mean, right now he's in massive, like insane form. He's played 10 events. He's been T17 or better in six of the 10. He missed the cut in the other four. So like, he's obviously just massively streaky. The upside's huge. I'm not going to try to sell anyone on uh, Akshay winning this golf tournament right now, but uh, finishing position bet, he's playing pretty well. Uh, he can figure it out. Obviously the putter can go wonky and around the greens, not his thing. And that's a problem here, but uh, yeah, great theater. And uh, just a great way to, to kind of enter in as we get uh, everyone here. The band's back together. We have 12 of the uh, Live Golf uh, participants back in this field. We've lost some of the old school Sandy Lyle, Larry Mises of the world have kind of fallen off this year. So it is a little bit of a stronger field than I would say even normal for a Masters event. Like those guys just aren't in it. Um so, again, we are, I think, at 89 currently, Ron. I, I cannot wait to uh, watch this and get into this. Uh, but take us from a high-level view. Obviously, we know this week more than any is a little bit more – I think it's okay to be a little bit more narrative-driven. Course history more than any place matters more at Augusta National. I talked about it with Andy last week on the betting show. And for me, it's always – it's like a marriage of form and course fit. And the course history is significantly further down. It matters more here than ever. And it's still, I still want course fit and form, but that course history piece kind of gets on a closer to level playing field because some of the nuances of the course. Yeah. So this, you know, Augusta National, as everybody knows, you know, is a course that places such a high value on path performance, you know, so you know, the trends piece I've got coming out a little bit. I know other people have, have done stuff like that too, but you know, this week, you know, people can, you know, you know, criticize trends at times. And I agree, agree with that, you know, a lot of times, but you know, this week <clears throat> when there's such a focus on experience here at Augusta National, as far as, you know, just building kind of that memory in your mind of, you know, where you can miss shots and, you know, how the greens are contoured in certain areas. And, you know, you see guys like Zal Torres who just putt, you know, has not a lot of sample size, but you can just see already some of them who, you know, have taken note of, you know, how the greens work. And, you know, of course, you get into guys like Hideki and, and you know, Justin Spieth who have played here so much. And, you know, that course history just kind of builds up over time. And so, you know, I think that experience is, is really huge here. And, you know, the trends definitely speak that out. And then, like you said, when you get into current form, um, you know, it's it's pretty staggering when you look at, you know, you know, some of the trends that um, when you look at, um, you know, for example, you know, uh, 13 of the last 15 winners had at least four career wins. So you have to have winning experience, even going back to, you know, having um, good past performance within the last two years in a major, you know, 13 of the last 15 winners um, have finished in the top six of a major within the last two years. And so, yeah, it's kind of what you said. It's a marriage between, you know 
form. It's a marriage uh, when you look at, you know, history here at Augusta National. And there are actually certain um, strokes gained and other stats that's that um, really do matter here. Um, for example, T to green play, obviously that's, that's kind of a given, um, but par five scoring is going to be huge this week. Uh, driving distance, you know, I think uh, looking at, I was, you know, depending on how the course plays, it's supposed to be even firmer this year, according to early reports, you know, so carry distance, um, apex ball height. Um, so all those things that have proven to be big, I think uh, kind of this week are, are emphasized even more. I mean, look at last year's leaderboard. It came in with uh, like, Bill had no form on live comes in uh, and, you know, back doors of Sunday uh, T2 Patrick Reed had not been playing well on live, uh, in, you know, finds himself inside the top five. You think even the year before Charles Schwartz never in the mix uh, in the mix with the top 10 there, you know, coming back, you know, we had a couple of years ago where Fred couples was in there too, with, you know, made the cut for the first time in a very long time. So yeah, it, it's just a unique place. And obviously a, a unique, um, you know, unique field too, with a little bit smaller than even your, your typical major fields. Um, I got a visitor. I'm going to kick it back to you. You can talk to us about some of the other uh, key stats that we want to kind of hone into this week. Yeah. So, you know, when you look at, you know, the data for this week, we obviously just talked about, you know, course experience being so important. Um, but yeah, you, we're looking at mid to long arm play. 77% um, of approach shots come from at least 150 yards away. Uh, so, you know, you really have to be good with your long irons this week. That's definitely one data point I'm looking at. Um, this is a course where it's much easier to separate on approach <clears throat> compared to off the tee. You know, you have these wide open fairways, um, actually the widest on tour, 51 yards on average. And so, you know, you have this cut of rough that's, you know, not going to be penal at all. And so, you know, off the tee, you know, players are pretty free to, to bomb away off the tee and so um it's really hard to separate in that area and so this is definitely a second shot course approach play very important um and then for me also you know you know and this is going to be talked about a lot but being creative around the greens um scrambling is going to be really big this week and you know we'll get into a few minutes here the rabbit hole we have a lot of great tools on there a lot of great filters that you can get into um just around these greens they're so tricky you know the the short grass and these tight lies when you're trying to, you know, scramble for par. And so, you know, we have the, the filter where we can get into, you know, scrambling on the short grass. Um, and then of course, putting, um, you know, bank grass greens, these are the fastest greens on tour players will scale year. You know, it kind of goes between 13 and by the, by Sunday, it's, it's up to 15 on the stint meter. So these are just lightning fast greens. Um, and so, yeah, those are a few key things along with par five scoring, which uh, is another huge one. Yeah, the greens too, because you know, even historically, we've you know we've moved away from the green books, um, you know, on tour. But even like old caddies have them from years past. There was never a thing here. That was kind of always like the the Bryson issue was like you know could not compute some of those things to be able to walk through. And that's just a unique element to this place. Is part of I think why you have that course history piece mattering so much because you just need to play it. You need reps. You need to come here specifically and have an understanding of the pin placements, where to miss, where not to miss. Uh, Cause as you mentioned, like just big fast greens where you're getting into a spot where, yeah, you, you can, these are big wide fairways, but like you gotta be in the right spot because if you can't get yourself in the right spot on the approach shot, uh, you are going to be in a spot where you are having a screamer downhill putting here or uh, just in, in massive, massive danger. So, you know, think of, oh great, it's wide fairways, but like <laughs> look at the winning score here every year. This is, you know, this is a very, very difficult track. It is long. Uh, they mow the, the fairways in a very specific way. So it like does not lead to excessive run out, which is another unique feature. Like they continue to stay up on the times to try to like, again, they, back in the day, it was like to tiger proof it. But now it's just the way the game is played. They want to make sure that this piece of property is always uh, at the highest of integrity to make sure that we can continue to have uh, the most competitive golf that we can have. So uh let's jump into it let's start to uh let's start to look at some things and ways to look at the opening odds board i want to share uh super important on a monday morning to obviously to shop um if we want to go ahead and look and see what's going on here this is our friends over at the lines we can get multiple books here to show here <laughs> uh scotty is is a massive favorite four to one uh shorter somewhere not 
unusual for Caesars to be a, maybe a little bit shorter, not a great golf product. Uh, though they will take a lot of money. So thank you, Caesars. Um, Rory down to 10. I know you were on Rory last week. Hard not to be encouraged like from a strokes gain approach standpoint. He really struck it really well. Was in the, I mean, finished way off of, of where Denny uh, and Akshay were, but, you know, finished third, played some good golf. Uh, Rom got a little shorter. Those, uh, you know, there were some 13s out there. It's kind of interesting to see where Rom's at. Again, not really competitive from an individual standpoint. Uh, on live has not won on live yet. Uh, Xander Brooks, um, new putter for Brooks. Didn't seem to go very well in Doral. Interested to see what happens with his odds. I mean, obviously he is a killer uh, in majors. So like I wouldn't overrate a poor weekend of three rounds in Doral, but interesting to see. Uh, Hideki, I know you played Hideki at 50 uh, back when we were at the, you know, when he was going absolutely nuclear on Sunday at Riv. Uh, 25s were out there this weekend. That, those have kind of dissipated. Uh, Jordan, we know can do his thing around here. Uh, and then we get into this section with a couple of guys that like really interesting to me. I'm really enamored with the debutante market this week. It, very rare that we have two guys inside the top 10 in the official world golf rankings. And I know that's obviously a flaw flawed system, but hard to argue that both Wyndham Clark and Ludwig Oberg are not two of the top 12 players in the world. Uh, and they're making their master's debut. Oberg making his major debut, which is really, really interesting. Uh, you, you talked about Zalatoris, Neiman, uh, not historically been a great major player, but has been, you know, obviously getting his uh, you know, bunch of W's there on, uh, on Live Golf. Hovland, I, I made a Hovland bet, Ron, um, leading into the BMW, uh, which he then obviously won and then won the Tour Championship. I have a Hovland 42 for this week. Which I tell you how many times I opened that this this winter and looked at it and just daydreamed about a Hovland 42, being that he was like 16. Uh, I think in your like look ahead piece that you wrote in like December or January, there was nothing like short of like 16 on on Hovland, and here we are, uh, 35s back out in the marketplace because it's been an absolute disaster. So uh, Canley cannot play. Canley's been been really bad, and you, you know you've been doing a lot of work. We got a lot of uh, actual masters strokes game data in here uh Cantley cannot putt on these greens which is a very interesting thing uh Cantley will be a matchup target for me this week cam smith not playing particularly well either but a great fit obviously because he has a little bit of that magic bean stuff and is not punished off the tee here too so yeah very interesting again shop around uh we've seen more drift uh, later in the week this year than years past. I know uh, typically firing early on a Monday morning is advantageous. You can get some of the better odds, but we've seen some places kind of move a little bit. I did fire for the most part uh, this morning, but um, it's definitely something to watch and definitely something for everyone to shop around. Uh, don't lock in the one book. You could see here, you know, definitely different prices. If you have Brooks Kepka interest, for instance, you can see here, Bet MGM has a 20 or Caesars is at 11. And those are, very different payouts, very different uh, price tickets. So make sure you are shopping around. Yeah, that what's really intriguing to me is you look at that, you know, starting at about 35 to one with Zalatoris and you just have a whole huge glut of players in this area who had a lot of win equity. It's just, you know, they're either in bad form or, um, you know, they're just guys who haven't had maybe much experience here. You see, you know, some live guys in this range with DJ and Bryson both had 45 to one. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of interesting names, even, getting down to like Tony Fino at, you know, 50 and, um, you know, Colin Morikawa all, all the way down to 55. And I mean, Max Holmes might be the most intriguing one to me. Like he's all the way down to 60. And of course we've talked many times about his, his poor performances here, but um, you just never know when that experience finally builds up to the kind of a crescendo and, and maybe this week it all clicks for someone like Max. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely the interesting tier. And I wouldn't go personally just too far below this uh, to be honest, like, we just haven't seen it historically where guys win in this range. Uh, you know, I guess the Sergio's win, you could have got Sergio, I guess, in this market uh, or in this range early in that week. Uh, I think Danny Willett closed in this range uh, a handful of years ago. Obviously, there were some you know longer odds there, but in terms of where he closed, you know, after his spring season, this is kind of where we've been. Uh, so, yeah, there's definitely some interesting names in here that are, uh, you know, Proven winners on tour and some elite players, uh, which is, yeah, it's a, it's an interesting market. And again, it is because we're dealing with a smaller field 
And even though we don't have the old guys, we do have a bunch of AMs. We do have some some older guys. It is kind of a more truncated player pool this week in terms of uh, guys that can actually win this tournament. So um, if you want to come over to Betsports Golf, we are raising prices. Prices are going up at the end of this week. Uh, we are uh, going to be able to lock that in for you for the rest of time. So if you want to roll with us, head over to BetsportsGolf.com. Uh, you can go to the plans page and you can lock in whatever it is. You can lock in your weekly price, your monthly price, or your annual, and you'll be able to renew on that number for eternity until you fall off of it. Um, it is a, again, we are, we waited to do this until we can ensure that that could happen for you. If you're still not sure you're on the fence, you want to get a, a little trial. We have a cheap way to do it. Vivid picks is a DFS pick them platform. Uh, they have golf games, similar to some other ones that are out there in the marketplace. They have a great first deposit match up to 250, which is the best of the space. If you like to play these type of games, use our promo code Betsports Golf. Play five dollars on Vivid Picks after you make a five dollar play, and that game finishes whatever it is. So, so it's you know you make a Purdue UConn uh, pick them for tonight. Uh, within 24 or 48 hours, you'll get an email how to access your Betsports Golf subscription. For free for the rest of the year. You already made your uh, your input and your deposit over at Vivid, and you are good to go. Uh, now, again, you won't be able to take advantage of the early bird locked in pricing that way. But if you want to try us out for just cheap uh, for five bucks, you can do so with Vivid. So check that out. Uh, hit us up if you have any questions on Twitter at Betsports Golf. Vivid's only available in 28 states. They're listed here. DM us. We'll get you a promo code for uh, 50% off your first month or $50 off the annual subscription. It's a great deal. Uh, so basically, you can get a annual subscription with this deal for $150. It's going to be $250 next week when we talk on Monday. So uh, take advantage of that. Let us know if you have any questions. All right, Ron. Uh, let's play around with a few things here and take a look. Well, I just want to kick around, too. You can actually go in here into the rabbit hole uh, and look at courses. This is Augusta National, uh, and this has your strokes gain data. You're not going to be able to find this. Uh, many other places. You're not going to be able to find it anywhere else where you can build and model it out, uh, which we are excited to have for you here this week. Now, again, it's an interesting week from a modeling standpoint because we do have the 12 live guys in the field. So the sample of what we have on those guys is a little bit interesting and a little bit limited. Uh, but again, I, I always try to preach that I wouldn't necessarily use the model as like the answer to the test. There's a little bit more nuance, especially this week because of the live guys. Uh, but again, it's definitely interesting to see if you want to see course history at the place where course history matters the absolute most. We have that here for you. So if you want to uh, touch on any of this, Ron, uh, before we jump into some stuff. Yeah, so like you said, we have actual strokes gain data here at Augusta National going back to 2019. Um, so uh, that's you know pretty unique. And you're not going to find that really anywhere else. Um, and yeah, this week, like you said, with modeling, you know, it, it is kind of tricky. So one thing I'll do this week is kind of maybe not hone in as much on some of this, you know, more specific stats. Um, I'll take maybe a little bigger picture view. Um, I'm definitely going to use, you know, obviously past history here at Augusta National a lot more. Um, and just in general, as we'll get to, like we usually do, um, looking at similar courses that are maybe difficult, very difficult on approach um, around the greens. And so kind of looking maybe at a little, you know, two to three year sample size, try to broaden out a little bit more to win some of these live guys actually played you know on some of these other pga tour courses love it i'm just going to add this to get our model building started here we'll add uh stroke scheme total uh at augusta and i think that's a great way to just kind of build off of uh off of kind of a baseline anchor stat for the model this week which i think is is really really important so um yeah, we want to look at some other courses that are playing difficult. I also want to see, this is the one thing where it's like, I really want to see form. I want to see guys that are playing really well. So I like to look at some stuff that's going on now. And we have had at least a decent amount of, of rounds played uh, for what we have going on this season. The problem with this is, is as you can see, you know, we're not going to get anything from uh, from the live guys. So they are going to be punished in this. But uh, just, just to look who's been playing really well this season. Uh, and again, you can see here, this is a decent sample of, you know, around 30 rounds or so for most of these guys. Obviously, no surprise, painted ones across the board, basically, for Scotty Scheffler. Uh, Xander Shoffley, two. Uh, Sahith Tagala, three. Wyndham Clark, four. And Akshay, five. Uh, again, not super surprising, to be honest, uh, considering uh, all those top 20s and how he's played. Very, very interesting top 10. And again, like, 
You can decide to model this or not. It's up to you because, again, it's going to be noisy. You're not going to get the live stuff. But I, I would start here in terms of, like, looking at guys that are playing really well. It's just not a place that you go and find your form. If you are, like, kicking it around for the most part, can I touch on some of the live guys historically that have struggled? But, like, man, Phil has been here, you know, 25 times. Um, you know, Patrick Reed is a local guy, knows his course really well, played a bunch here in college, obviously has the win. So, like, those are outliers. I want guys that are currently in form, and this is a great way to start. So, uh, guys that are playing really good. And, again, you got to be careful because we're going to get no live guys. Um, all right, what do you want to do filter-wise? Uh, you want to look at some, like, difficult golf courses? What should we do here? Yeah, so in our filter – yeah, and our filter by conditions menu uh, where you have just so many options to choose from here and it covers pretty much every every base this week. Um, yeah, so starting on the very top, you know, I'm definitely looking at, um, you know, other courses that play difficult. So um, uh, looking at both difficult and very difficult, um, I would select both of those. Um, you could also get into um, how long this course is. Um, so definitely length is another thing that I'm definitely looking at. Um, Field strength, as you see there, you can look at any other event that's had, you know, very strong fields like this. And another thing, like not only is Augusta National Experience important, but you see there we have event type. You can actually click on major and you can look at any other just focusing on solely on major fields. So, yeah, there's a lot of really good ones up here. But uh, those four, I think, are going to be a, a big part of my model this week. For me? All right. I had a visitor this morning. He's hanging out with me. Let's look at very difficult and difficult uh, scoring conditions first, and we'll go from there. I want to look at majors as well. Uh, yes. All right. Yes, buddy. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Yes. So we'll very yeah. Go ahead, Ron. You can talk about it here. No, yeah. So you can – I mean, you can see, you know, these names are going to be very familiar to everyone. Um so yeah, major. Uh, we got the major feature here, or not yet, but uh, yeah, difficult scoring conditions. Um, so yeah, toughest toughest course uh, players are going to face here, and so yeah, this kind of gives you a chance to look at you know similar courses that have played like Augusta National. A lot of these are already going to be you know major type courses, and so um, it'll kind of mix a few of those together. Uh, but this is definitely something I'll look at, and I'll I'll broaden this out. You know, I'll even go back sometimes as far as five years. Um, uh, especially when you get to the major section, but um, I think, you know, especially with the live guys, it's important to widen, widen the years a little bit. Yeah. I had that there five years and you look back here, five years, familiar names, obviously John Rahm. And, and this is actually to your point, really good. Cause you got a decent sample size on uh, the DJs of the world, the John Rahms of the world, uh, looking at the all rounds last five years, you kick it down a little bit last 50 rounds. You're, obviously you're still going to get the 50 rounds that, uh, that they've played in last, which is super helpful. Um, you can see here, smaller sample for some guys, but, uh, still Scotty, Rory, Rom, Zalatoris, uh, Fitz, Hovland, Xander, Homa. It's interesting to see like Homa's and it's such a, a, a unique piece, right? Like that. He hasn't done it in a major, right? He, he kind of got a backdoor top 10 at the open championship. Max Homa's not celebrating a top 10 at the open championship, but think about where he's won. He's won at Quail Hollow. He's won at Riviera. He's won at Torrey Pines. Um, we don't typically go to TBC Potomac, but we had that one year where that was the host of um, of the Wells Fargo because of the the President's Cup. It was a tough golf course. Like that was, I think it like he won at like nine under. Uh, it was Cam Young and, and Keegan in that mix. Like that was a tough track. So where home is won does fit like major golf historically. So. Uh, it, it's, he's not currently in great form, but like, I just, I can't, I wouldn't not click Homa because he hasn't done it before in majors personally. So as a guy I like to back, but, uh, maybe not this week. So yeah, definitely interesting. Let's add this to the condition model. I think this is a really good place to start. Uh, we'll go again. You don't have to make a note here. This is just for you, for yourself. Uh, difficult scoring. You can see when we get to the end, why that would matter, especially when you're adding a multitude of stroke scene total. Uh, you start to want to have an idea of, of what you're looking to filter into. You touched on it too. I want to look at the majors, Ron, uh, and just see who's been playing well uh, in those. Again, like obviously the tracks are different than, than what we're going to have at Augusta, but I think it, it speaks to playing well in big events. And these are different, unique things. We should go into the conditions scene in event type here. We'll look at majors and see 
who is popping in those. We'll obviously see some of those same familiar names, and that's kind of what we're uh, looking to hone in on as well. Let's see here. Last five years, last 50 rounds of the majors. Uh, again, very similar names at the top. Um, click click on average, too. Let's see what the – um you know, we yeah. can actually go and see if how – much Scotty has separated here compared to Rom. Yeah. Uh, small Austin Eckrow. Uh, again, you can go in here. Like Rod said, you can look at ranking average, actual total cumulative strokes gained. And you can see a uh, percentage of rounds gained as well, which I think is very useful. You could filter out something like this, which will bump Austin Eckrow out. So we don't uh, have a, you know, really small sample. Like he'll get massive points in a, in a model for being this high in strokes gain total uh, if you don't filter it out. So we'll see guys who played in at least four majors uh, made the cut here. This is a, a decent sample. Uh, and yeah, look, it's, you can see big game hunting in Zalatoris is hard to argue how he has played so well. And look, I mean, strokes gain putting on average over stroke per round putting, which is right at the bugaboo of Will Zalatoris. Uh, again, always like a great lag putter, but like the, Anything they zoomed in on historically before he went to the broomstick within five feet was really tough to watch, but he's been fantastic. Uh, and yeah, it is, he's kind of separated from the field. And then you kind of get the next big three. You know, Xander, I think, is, is knocking on the door. Xander's very interesting to me. He's added, he's added some length, uh, club head speed, ball head, ball speed up. Um, he's, he's like up a half stroke per round off the tee this year compared to last year. Like the driver is a, a real weapon for Xander right now. Just What's the biggest event Xander's ever won? <laughs> he's, 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 uh, it would have been the players. Uh, Scotty didn't hunt him down. So it's, yeah, it's just a very interesting, uh, you know, it's a, it's a tough. I mean, he's, he's sitting up there as if he uh, had won some stuff. So, yeah, this is uh, a great way to start and some very familiar names that we see here over the last handful of years. So we'll add strokes gain total majors here as well. All right. What are some other things you want to get into? Yeah, I think I think the length of this course, you know, you know, has it, this course has shown that it does favor hitters who hit it farther off the tee. You know, obviously, yeah. um, carry distance is another thing to look at, but just going to course length um, in that same menu, and okay. you can even you can even look at off the tee and you know see um, strictly off the tee how players perform in those conditions. You can do it um, total as well. So there's many different ways you can use these filters and, and different metrics to kind of combine them together. Um, but yeah, very long. I think it's the seventh longest course um, that players will face. And so um, it just kind of show maybe a little bit of separation here with some of the longer hitters. Yeah, to me, I would want to look at this. I'd still want to stay personally in the strokes gain total menu and look at T to green. Because I think if you're, I think you're overfitting if you're looking at strokes gained off the T on long courses. I think really what you're trying to tell yourself is who can hang T to green when they're forced to play at length. Um, and you kind of overfit and you're going to get some of that here. You can see the off the tee numbers, but you know, I think tee to green is really what you're trying to capture by putting this filter on. And again, Scotty, Rory, uh, Hideki, very interesting to see here. Hideki, another one, um, club head speed, ball speed, length back up, um, pretty substantially over last year. We're seeing that kind of happen in the leaderboard with everything Hideki's doing. So I'm not sure if he's just, a little bit healthier again like we had it coming in last week again there's more uh, hideki you know question marks heading into it but he seems healthy because he's swinging more freely for sure uh the distance is back up to uh you know previous years back to basically when he won the masters which is uh which is very interesting so yeah and look at jaeger up there you know he's made some gains with his you know driving and you can see you know he plays really well on, on long courses yep yep absolutely see heath is another one uh who is uh, you know, continue to, to add length, the iron game, get a little bit more consistent, um, which is definitely interesting to see. So yeah, I'm looking at strokes gain T to green in these situations here. We'll go T to green long, very long. And again, I, I, I know this class is definitely classified as very long. Um, I just kind of like more thing we're trying to do is, is filter out anything average or short, uh, which is, I think what we're, we're trying to capture here. All right, we definitely can do this. And you can go specifically looking at, obviously, driving distance as well. I think the way we just did it is a better story. Uh, but I think you can obviously you can add as many filters as you'd like, as many things to your model as you possibly would want to do. Uh, i got to turn my Slack off because people are bothering me. Um, but, yeah, let's just take a look here at driving distance too just to get a sense of uh, of what's going on here in this field. 
the last 50 rounds. Uh, now you touched on carry distance. Uh, do you think it's a carry distance week or is it a driving distance week? Well, kind of like you mentioned in the opening with, you know, how they mow the fairways, they're trying to limit, you know, roll out. And so, you know, that's when carry distance, you know, I look at that for this week. I always have um, now even more so last year, perhaps with, the, you know, the wet conditions from all the rain. Um, so so probably not valuing it as much as I did last year. Um, okay. But it's just guys who have these, boom, you know, you know, a Rory type who has these, you know, these booming drives off the tee that are so high and they carry so far. And so, you know, when you're hitting it like that, you don't always have to shape it necessarily. And so I just think some of these guys <clears throat> that show that power um, are guys who have typically played very well here. It's interesting to see. I have to look at the gap between driving and carry distance just to see who's getting, uh, you know, who's getting that rollout too. And I think average is a good way to, to kind of hone in on that too, uh, just to get a sense of like who really separates in that. Um, yeah, I will probably get rank actually in this because just easier to, to not have to do the math while we're, while we're doing the show. Um, but yeah, you see like Gary Woodland, for instance, seventh in carry distance, 27th in this field in uh, driving distance, which is, is interesting. Uh, Rom gets a lot of carry, doesn't get as much rollout as our higher ball flights. Uh, Keegan, same thing, carries it, doesn't get the rollout. Uh, Jason Day is another one. So this is just kind of an interesting uh, situation here. Same thing, like Neiman's the opposite. We know Neiman's got that penetrating lower ball flights, driving distance. He gets that extra rollout quite a bit here. Eighth in distance, uh, all the way down at 19th in carry distance, which is interesting. So uh, we will add it. I think, you know, capturing both, however you want to do it, I think is important to add. But again, carry distance, some of these other things you can't find anywhere else. Um you know, in terms of uh, statistical modeling. So a uh, great way to kind of dig in off the tee. Uh, how about approach this week? I mean, obviously, you know, approach matters more than anything. If you're going to weigh something extra, be very heavy on something statistically, it is approach. Uh, is there any of the greens and reg proximity? You've touched on the going for the green and the par five scoring. Is, uh, is that what you want to really kind of hone in on here? Yeah, so... I'm not going to be as much going for the green. Maybe I might do going for the green percentage just to show, you know, which players are aggressive. But I think overall, all four of these par fives are pretty reachable. And so I think everyone's for the most part, is going to be going for them, you know, on that second shot. So for me, I'm not emphasizing that as much. But I'm just going to go back to, you know, kind of what I've done is, is I'll look at recent approach play. I think even the last 12 rounds is really important. But also I'll go because this is the second toughest course to gain strokes on approach. Um, and so I'll look at our, our filter also that we have um, the ability to, um, you know, who gains approach on very difficult courses where it's, you know, the greens are challenging and approach play is difficult. So I think, you know, from a historical perspective, um, when you kind of go down to the, um, you know, ability to gain on approach is kind of what I'll, I'll focus on mostly. Um, obviously, you want to hit greens here. You know, that kind of goes back also to good dry percentage. Um, which um, is on the off the tee menu, um, but and 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 again, seventy six percent of approaches come from one hundred fifty yards mm. plus, and so you know, yeah. I think um, you know you can kind of if you really wanted to get into it, you could kind of look at our our we have fairway uh, proximity numbers. Um, I don't think from the rough, the rough is so short. You know, you have that first cut that's only one and three quarter inches. Um, so I don't think rough numbers are really much to look at this week. So I'm focusing you know, on kind of those fairway numbers, uh, especially from, you know, longer distances. Yeah. Uh, for me, if you're going to get into like the uh, approach buckets, I, I would go with a larger sample just to give yourself, uh, I think, you know, more accurate information. If you're honing in on overall strokes gained approach, you mentioned, you know, kind of filtering. And I, I agree looking at like real short term form uh, makes a ton of sense too, just to see who's absolutely dialed in. Um, you will add this here. I think, you know, this is, Interesting. We'll just go last 12. Um, you mentioned too, like, would you, would you hone in on looking at difficult scoring conditions? Would you filter by like, um, you know, gaining on approach being difficult or very difficult? Which way would you, would you do this? I think you muted there. Yeah, I'm going on definitely on approach um, where you were just out on the bottom there. Difficult, very okay. difficult, just because it gives you a really good sample of, of other courses that obviously nothing's going to play on approach like Augusta National, but you know I'm looking for those that are the most similar. Yeah, this is a good list, and 
uh, good uh, approach players, some guys that have played pretty well here too. So uh, approach uh, difficult. Yeah, lots of different ways to do this. I think trying to think through this, obviously, you know, having more access to this over time, really trying to think through what I'm trying to have the stat tell me uh, is really important too. Instead of just, you know, clicking buttons and adding things, really trying to make sure we're really cognizant of what those stats are. And this would be really cool to view too. If you if go to the floor ceiling filter really quick and okay, with, yeah. with yeah, well, with those filters on um, okay. and that, that will kind of give you just, and again, you can't really add this to the model, but just to look at which players, you know, when you get these really difficult greens, you know, who's, you can look at, you know, who's gained, you know, consistently. And you can also look at, you know, who's gained, you know, two, three, four per round and kind of see, you know, who tends to, you know, spike on these difficult greens and difficult approach venues as well. Yeah. Uh, I, I love this. This is something again, where we talk about it all the time, spiked weeks. How often can someone, you know, have spike putting weeks is often referred to, especially in DFS. Uh, but this actually backs it up with the data. How frequently does that happen? You can add any of the filters, as you can see here, we have uh, the difficult and very difficult to gain on approach. You can see how often someone is, is gaining strokes or not losing strokes, basically. And again, this is a massive area where Scotty is, is separating from everyone else. Um, I wrote about this in my uh, master's players guide too, just where he is even just from a TD Green standpoint, from even just Rom and Rory, who are, you, have, you call those his peers, he is gaining more strokes. Uh, he's gaining two strokes more often T to green uh, than Rory is gaining one stroke, his nearest competitor. It's just absolutely mind boggling. Uh, but you can see how frequently Scotty is gaining, uh, say two strokes on approach. And look, this is where Rom is like, uh, he can, he's popping. He can pop from a, uh, just a absolutely dialed in approach game. Sometimes uh, last 36 rounds, uh, he's doing it more than anyone. You get out to, to three. Uh, he's kind of in that mix too. Scotty Brooks, Matthew Pavon, he's getting it done. I mean, he's been absolutely nuts this year. Uh, you can see here how frequently that happens. Now, this is, you know, maybe an issue for Colin. They could still see Colin has some of the upside. Uh, he's just strokes gained positive on approach far less frequently than some of the other guys. And that was kind of his calling card. And the guy like that that has less distance uh, is maybe less adapt around the green. Kind of has to be perfect at a place like this. It gets a little harder for him to do. And again, he's been in the mix fairly frequently, but to actually have the ceiling to compete gets a little bit harder when you your superpower is maybe not as super as it used to be, and is not as super as some of the other guys that could do the rest of the stuff. Uh, so this is obviously very, very interesting to see. Uh, the putting stuff is obviously interesting too. Again, I'm going to have a gained on approach filter here, so this is not exactly what we are looking at to see statistically, but uh, this is actually something you can poke around in, which I think is. Is super duper useful. Uh, let's see anyone getting to yeah four? Cam Smith, Scotty, Morikawa, Hatton, kind of the guys separating themselves. Interesting to see. All right, uh, we know around the green is tricky. We've captured some of that again in the strokes game total data on the Masters and stuff like that. But in terms of uh, anything you want to do in these buckets, proximity, scrambling short grass, what would you be looking to do? Yeah, this is, you know, as everyone knows, Augusta has, you know, some of the most challenging tight lie, short grass collection areas that players are playing off of. And, you know, you combine that with the sloping greens and it just gets really tricky. And so, you know, I think, you know, when you go to scrambling from the short grass and, you know, obviously if you wanted to just look, take a general view or we have the option in the filter menu where you can actually look at, you know, conditions on other types of short grass courses, whether it's, you know, easy, medium, difficult. Um, and so definitely I would select, you know, difficult for, for that range. Um, and then the cool thing is you can even, um, you know, if, if you want to just take a broader view, you could look at just scrambling on difficult courses in general. Um, but I would definitely look at, you know, short grass for sure for this week. Yeah. We get a pretty good sample here for, for these guys in the fields, uh, scrambling short grass. Um, you get a wrong a little noisy sample data. Um, you know, Mike, we are still chipping around like a champ. Uh, and then you get into some guys that we would probably expect. So Kurt Kitayama, interesting to see. He's uh, showing up there. Uh, Spieth, Wyndham Clark, not surprising. Uh, definitely a strength of uh, of their games as well. Uh, Taylor Moore improving there as well a little bit. So definitely an interesting uh, subset of, uh, of names here. We'll add this here to the model. And 
do a round the green uh, short. And again, just notes for yourself. Uh, you don't have to put anything in there when you're when you're modeling stuff out. We also have this too. You want to show people this is new? Dark mode. That's your thing. We got dark mode for you now too, people. Some some people don't like all the white. It's too, it's too much, but uh, it's there for you now. Uh, another cool feature when we actually click the button and build the model too. Uh, finally, so. Uh, all right, let's get into uh, one more thing. Let's see here. What do you want to do? You want to do uh, something putting wise? Do you want to do something specific on firm and fast? Do you want to do something on bent? What do you want to do from a putting standpoint? Yeah, so for sure, I'll go bent grass. Um, these greens are <clears throat> some of the smoothest on tour. Um, obviously, the speed is really up this week. So, you know, I'm definitely looking at bent grass putting on fast greens. And um, I don't know what the sample size will look if we combine them, but, yeah, um, you know, you could definitely also do one at a time individually. Uh, we do last five years. So we can click in here and get a sample of what some of these courses are. Female plays a lot. Um, new player pages coming very soon. We can have expansive uh, rabbit hole data for all these uh, places. Yeah, so not a ton. Uh, you're going back pretty far. So I would I would do these individually because uh, you're 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 backing out for a couple of years to be able to get yourself up to the spot. So um, I would do let's do fast because uh, I think that that matters a ton. Uh, but again, I would, you know, individually bucket these when you're building out your model. You'll see our models. You click down here to view expert rankings. You can see some stuff. Uh, I have a model in here already. First time through Andy Lack inside golf podcast uh, models with us here at Bet Sports Golf. You can see what he's doing. Uh, Matt Senzi from the Tap It In podcast models over here at Bet Sports Golf as well. You can see the models uh, that they are building as well. See what stats they're adding as you go through and uh, make notes of those and then build your own. Uh, let's see strokes gain putting on fast greens last 50 rounds. Harris English, Cam Smith, Max Homa, Patrick Reed, Danny McCarthy, John Rahm, Sam Burns, Xander Shoffley, uh, Terrell Hatton, and Nick Dunlap with a small sample, 16 rounds, uh, and putting really well on uh, on those fast greens, which is interesting to see. We'll add this here. We'll do fast. We'll do one more. Do something scoring-wise. Do you want to do uh, – well, okay, what do you want to do from a scoring standpoint? Yeah, let's do par five scoring for sure. Um, okay. I think, you know, this is one of the courses where it's just so huge. You know, if you go back to 2009, 72% of overall scoring has come on these par five holes. And so, you know, even going back to just 2017, Masters champions are a combined 60 under par on these holes. And so um, I think these are, are really critical to score on, especially as tough as the par fours are. Like we're talking a, a scoring average of, you know, 4.18 on the par fours. And so, you know, you had better be taking advantage of these par five holes. Do you want to do average or birdie or better rate? I think birdie or better because, you know, we want birdies. Um, and so just looking at that rate, you know, is, is a cool thing that we have here as well. I don't know their site where you can actually look at strictly birdie or better percentage on these, these whole ranges. Uh, yeah, we're getting an amateur in here as well. She'd love to see. Uh, you know, good for him. Uh, handling these par fives. We'll see how he can handle it this week uh, at Augusta. But yeah, some uh, familiar and some interesting names in here too. I got another Steven Yeager pop. Uh, GT Poston's not really dialed in right now, but is handled par five scoring. This is last 50 rounds. Obviously, you can mess around with the sample uh, if you wanted to and, and kind of play around with that. But we'll, for the sake of this, uh, we'll add birdie or better par five. Uh, some other things we can do, and I think it is interesting this week, um, in miscellaneous metrics, you can look at apex height. Um, again, holding these firm and fast greens is difficult, so having a ball flight that uh, and trajectory that kind of could come in and land a little bit softer um, I think does matter. I want to kind of play around with how I want to capture that because I'd probably want to put uh, some sort of filter on it a little bit. But, yeah, definitely something to to take a look at here, uh, something that you can have. These are interesting things to to look at maybe things that you don't want to model but you know maybe the things you want to give a tiebreaker to to get a sense of uh you know what's going on to am pm scoring i think is really interesting if you're messing around with you know matchups or showdown or anything like that is another uh, interesting tool that you can use all right uh let's do this create the mixed condition model get that button you got to give your report a name uh we will do oh masters first look I didn't back out of all my stuff, so I have a lot of stuff in here. Uh, you can get a sense of some other stuff that I put in my model. Um, three putt avoidance. Talked about scrambling short grass. Uh, strokes gain approach on long courses. 
uh, touchdown carry distance, driving distance, difficult scoring, and some stuff that uh, that we did here. So some redundancy, but uh, again, nothing uh, nothing that you can't go ahead and do. You can see here we got a little math for you. You don't have to do it. We got a little total here. It takes you to 100. You don't have to do the math. It's fantastic. Uh, I'll mess around with some of it. But let's just see here. Uh, I will anchor out in some of these longer term ones that I think are more important and we'll see what the math does. Again, I would take more time uh, for the sake of the show. We'll do this here to kind of knock this out. Let's see what potting gets us. Yeah, I like this. Oh, we just backed up. I will go a little bit longer on approach. And I will give the par five scoring a little bit of a bump. Yeah, as you can see here, it'll total up for you. And you can save as many of these as you would like. Uh, you can see if you go back here, you can download any of these into a CSV. If you want to make a, a, a really elaborate model or you like to you know, back it out into Excel, you can do all that here as well into a CSV, which is really, really cool. Uh, you can hit Save and Generate, and it's going to spit out uh, your model. Be interesting to see if we can get anyone other than Scotty on the top. Probably not. Probably rightfully so. <laughs> Scotty Shuffler at the top, Will Zalatoris second, Xander Shoffley third, Hideki Matsuyama fourth. I'm feeling really good about my card right now, Ron, based off of the top. Yeah, of the yeah. Uh, Cam Smith five. Um, Cam Smith withdrew from live early. Um, he's not feeling well. Interesting to see if that has any effect on his odds floating out. I don't think it affects his chances to win, but interesting to see if it affects his odds. Rory six, Shane Lowry uh, seven. Wyndham Clark, eight, making his first go around here. John Rahm, defending champ, nine. Uh, and Brooks Kepka, 10. Now, being honest, I just we try to do our best to capture data that I think wouldn't negatively impact the live guys. And I think we did a pretty good job at it. But they are probably impacted. Um, you just don't have recent recent stuff on on Rahm Brooks. Obviously, Cam Smith still popped pretty well. Uh, but yeah, interesting to see some of the other guys rounding out here the top 20. Uh, a lot of interesting names. So yeah, this is a be a fun week. I'm probably going to build multiple models. It's it's definitely a week to do that. Mess around with a few. It's a great week to use the CSV feature and get it over into Excel and play around with some stuff here. Uh, any other takeaways for the folks before we wrap up? Yeah, just looking at that list there, I'm like, you see a lot of guys who are in really good form. You know, whether it's Hideki, you know, Will Zalatoris has you know kind of really picked his game up recently. Shane Lowry has been playing very well. Obviously, Wyndham. Um, so yeah, just kind of look, you know, really hone in on, you know, you could even go in the rabbit hole and strictly look at Augusta national and look at what, you know, what guys have done there. And an interesting fact, like when I just pulled it up last night, like I didn't even know this Adam Scott has lost on approach at Augusta national 14 straight rounds. And so just little tidbits, little details like that, that, that we have the strokes again data going back to 2019. So you can kind of really dig in and go pretty deep, um, even just at Augusta national. Yep, absolutely love that. It's a great point. And that's, again, something you cannot do or find anywhere else, uh, which again, we uh, hope you value. Take advantage of it. The subscription price is going up. You can lock in your price for life right now. Head over to the site. You can read Ron's preview here very shortly. Again, the best preview you'll be able to find in the space on this week's Masters. Uh, I knocked out my player's guide last week. If you want detailed notes on any every player in the field, it's updated this morning. Akshay is in there. Uh, you want to get notes on, on Akshay, put that in, uh, last night. I almost put it in yesterday in the afternoon, Ron. Uh, but I, I stopped cause I didn't want to jinx myself, uh, having a 66 on Akshay. I just wanted to, to watch it, but I felt really good about not having done that the way that the back nine played out. But yeah, Akshay is in there now notes on everyone in the fields, some rabbit hole data. Uh, definitely check that out. We, uh, we appreciate that. So, uh, again, subscribe to the YouTube channel. This is a new YouTube channel for us. We took all of our stuff from Betsperts Golf off of Betsperts uh, Company Media. Uh, so if you want an NFL stuff, that was all there. Now this is Betsperts Golf solely. So you just want our golf content, subscribe to this YouTube channel. If you're hanging out with us on Twitter, click over, subscribe. We appreciate that greatly. Betting show tomorrow, DFS on Wednesday. So for Ron, I'm Ryan. We'll see you all next time. Uh, we appreciate you hanging out with us. Good luck this week. Let's win some money.